Will old dry beans sprout? We decided to find out. Hi, I'm Kyleen. And I'm Jonathan, and we are the Provident Preppers. In response to an overwhelming amount of inquiries and some differing opinions about whether old dry beans would sprout, we decided to do our own experiment. So we took 23 different samples of dry beans ranging from newly purchased to 29 years in storage that had been stored under a variety of different conditions and we attempted to sprout them. The results were somewhat surprising. We've done a couple of videos on old beans and will they soften. This one's all about will they sprout. In the videos that I referred to, we had a lot of comments asking this very question. Will these beans sprout after however many years? And so we decided to put it to the test. We felt that it was important to have as wide of a sample base as we possibly could. So I even put on my little local Facebook page and asked if any of my friends had samples and we were able to accumulate some that way also. But we have a variety of beans that are a variety of ages from newly purchased to 29 years old. They were stored in a variety of containers and under a variety of conditions. And so hopefully with these results, we'll be able to really get a handle on not only whether or not the beans will sprout, but what conditions can you provide to make sure that your beans will be able to sprout. We use three different methods to germinate these beans. The first one, we're sprouting jars on the kitchen counter. The second, we're in Ziploc bags with wet paper towels taped inside of a window. Any beans that showed evidence of ability to sprout, then we planted them in potting soil to see what would happen. The beans in the jars were covered with water and allowed to soak overnight. And then we dumped out that water, rinsed the beans, and then from then on out, the beans were rinsed twice a day. And if you'll notice, the jars are inverted at a slight angle. This allows the liquid to drain off and still allows oxygen up into that jar. And back from our third grade science experiments, you guys will all remember this, we just folded a damp paper towel, slid it inside of a Ziploc bag, and placed 10 beans in each bag and then taped it on the inside of the window. We allowed these beans to germinate for four days and then we documented the process. We have our control group where we saved a little baggie full of the beans that weren't touched. And then we had the beans that were in the jar or the bottle and then the beans that were sprouted in the window. We planted any of the beans that successfully germinated into some really nice potting soil and put them under lights. And as you can see, we had mixed results with minimal success. Some of the beans, even though they initially germinated, failed to thrive once they were put in the potting soil. If you look at the little yellow arrow, you can see that there was a bean plant that was trying really hard, but it just didn't have enough oomph to do it. And those beans were back from 1999, so we would expect some issues. So it's not all just about actual germination. It's about germinating and having the energy and ability to create a new plant and produce the next generation of beans. The real question is, should you depend on those old beans? Ah, probably not. You can see just one meager plant here out of a whole bunch that were planted. They just didn't seem to do real well. And the newer beans, quite frankly, did much better than the older beans. Overall, our germination results were as follows. 10 out of the 23 bean samples just completely failed to germinate at all. That's a 43% failure rate. 10% of those in the jars germinated, and 37% of those in the window did germinate. We think that the reason why the window germinated so much better was because it had that heat. And both of them were exposed to light. The one in the window had a little bit more light, but definitely it had that nice warm environment, which does encourage germination. And as you probably can guess, the greatest success was with the newer beans. The newer beans just have more vitality and the ability to grow. And as always, storage conditions make a huge difference. The things that we learned you can do to increase your rate of germination is number one, to use fresh beans. Number two, store those beans correctly in a cool, dry, dark location inside of an airtight container. 
and then rotate, rotate, rotate. And this is coming from the woman who has 29 year old beans in my food storage. That is not a good idea. We saw how they sprouted. It's so much better to rotate your food storage. And having said that though, our previous videos did show that those are still good to eat. They're just not gonna grow well. I'd rather eat new beans personally, but he's right. They absolutely created delicious meals, but yeah, rotate, just rotate. We want to be able to share with you the actual results from all 23 of these samplings. So we're gonna try and move through this as quickly as we can. So just hang with us for a minute. The first sample is pink beans from 1999. They were stored in a number 10 can in a basement and then they were had been opened in my pantry for one year. Nah. There was no germination with these beans at all. Now the next three are kind of unique. Back in 2013 when we were writing the book, we had three different samples that were really cool. Pre-Y2K, my sister and I went to the same store and bought a bucket of beans. The only difference was that I stored mine in a cool basement because I had one and she stored hers in the garage for 13 years and then next to the side of the house for a year, which was a great study for us. You can see her bucket of beans is on the right hand side on the bottom. That little white measuring cup are the beans from my bucket. And then there's also a number 10 can of beans right there and you can see the difference in the color, in the texture. The old beans had like this shiny surface on them. It's just amazing the difference that storage can make. The number 10 cans were slightly better than those that had been stored in the plastic bucket. But that cool storage made all the difference in the world. So now we're gonna try and sprout each one of those. The pinto beans that were stored in the plastic bucket in my basement, in the window, they had a 90% germination rate. Not. The ones in the garage and outside just rotted. They smelled really bad and there was no evidence of germination. It did grow mold, grew some slimy something, but um, not healthy. And then the beans in the number 10 can, in the window they had a 60% germination rate and in the mason jar, there was one of them that germinated, but it was only one. There was a new package of lima beans that I had actually purchased for a video that we were doing. And these were best if used by February 7th, 2020. And as you would expect, we had a 100% germination rate in the window, but nothing germinated in the jar. That was kind of weird. This result was really interesting. We produced a video not long ago on storing your food storage in peat plastic bottles. Well, this was a peat bottle back in 2008 that I had stored some pinto beans in. And if you look, my window germination rate is 80%. These beans did really well stored in that peat bottle for the last 12 years. And then we had some navy beans that were stored at the same time and they had about a 40% germination rate. Overall, I didn't notice the white beans germinating very well. Now, I'm kind of a geek, okay? I really like the food storage look and I was gifted these beautiful antique mason jars and I filled them with different dry goods like the beans and put them up on top of my kitchen cabinets because I think they're beautiful. So these have not been stored in anything that you would think was a good storage condition. And in addition to that, I don't know how old they were because I, I only used the oldest beans that I had because I knew I wouldn't eat them. The black beans, which black beans germinate better than any other beans in our study. The black beans always did really well. But the jar had 50% germination rate and the window had 60%. Then white beans that were stored in the very similar manner, the white beans had a really good germination rate. They, in the window, they did 80%. They failed miserably in the jar, but the window did well. And lentils, I am positive these lentils are like ancient, but they were also in one of the decorative jars. Not. <laughs> nothing, nothing happened. And again, there are some pinto beans. Now these pinto beans, they're really old. They might've come from my sister's bucket. And let me show you why I think that, because if you look in the control dish, you'll see that they are very dark and kind of slimy looking, and that's what those beans look like. Not. <laughs> These totally rotted. They didn't, it, it's interesting to see that some of the beans that weren't gonna sprout, not only did they not sprout, but they really started to smell bad and they rotted. Now these were some of the beans that I got from one of my friends, Emily, and she actually had recently cooked some of these beans, but these were in her a bucket 
downstairs in her basement that had already been opened that she continued to take beans out of. And we got a 60% germination rate in the window. So those, those beans were 12 years old. And again, the crazy food storage lady with the beans on her counter had another jar of white beans. Not. They just rotted. These didn't do well at all. Now these are our 1991 can of beans. They have been stored really well in a cool basement for all 29 of those years. And as you can see, I was really shocked, but we had two of the window beans look like they were really trying hard to sprout. But when we planted them out afterwards, we had zero success. Those sweet little sprouts that were trying really hard just didn't have enough vigor to make it all the way through the soil. I hate lima beans. And if you listen to our videos, you'll know how badly I hate lima beans. And I appreciate those of you who like them. My husband likes them. So yes, I opened I this can and made a meal out of it. And then it's just stayed on my pantry shelf because I don't like them. So I don't make them very often. So I don't know how old they are. I'm sure they are very old. Not. Which is quite a blessing because if they don't sprout, I can't grow them. We don't have to eat them. I like that. Now these are some purple beans that I was gifted by my father-in-law and I grow them every year. They produce these gorgeous red vining flowers and then you harvest the beans and they're edible and they're delicious, but they're a very, very large bean. So these beans were probably about three years old and stored in a mason jar in a cool basement. Now this was interesting. The jar sprouted at 80%, but none of the beans in the window sprouted and I think that they just need a little bit of more time because it's such a large bean. I just don't think that the ones in the window were able to get moisture all the way through and initialize that um, germination process. Because when I planted them in the soil, look at them, they're beautiful. And I planted both those that had sprouted and those that hadn't sprouted yet. And I still got a real good success rate. Another decorative jar from the crazy food storage lady. Not. No sprouting at all, just rotting. The way that we rotate our food storage is we keep most of it in a cool basement storeroom. And then when I need food in my upstairs pantry, we bring it up there and pour it like into this bucket of black beans. It has a gamma seal lid on it, so it's really easy to access. And the next few samples actually come from beans that were in my kitchen buckets. These beans had a fantastic rate of germination, 80% in the jar and 70% in the window. But I think these beans were really new because we had recently packaged some new black beans and there were some that wouldn't fit into the mylar bag inside of the bucket. And so we just dumped them into the kitchen bucket. So I think these were really new beans. And then a bucket of really old lentils. Remember, I don't like the lima beans. Well, it's not that I don't like lentils. I just don't use them very often. So I'm sure that these were really old and they had some split peas mixed in with them. But we decided to sprout it anyway and... Not. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. And again, now here's another kitchen bucket. You notice this bucket is larger because I use more pinto beans than I use of the black beans. And that's kind of fun to have all those different buckets in the pantry with of different sizes with the gamma seal lids on them. These did really well. Jar was 50% germination rate and the window was 80%. I think these were also new because the same thing with the black beans, we had just recently packaged some new pinto beans. Now these kidney beans, I don't eat kidney beans very often. It's not that I don't like them, it's just they aren't what we eat a lot of. And so these have actually been there since probably about 1999. Not. Not, nothing. Except some rot there. Yeah. And then also a bucket of white beans that's in the kitchen pantry. We didn't repackage any new white beans when we did this, so I'm sure that these are all very old. But we still had a 10% germination rate in the jar and about a 30% in the window. And we threw this one in here. It's a little bit different because it's garden green beans, but we had done a video earlier this year on whether or not you can depend on this can of survival seeds to grow a garden. These were packaged for the year 2012, and we thought it would be interesting to add these to the experiment. Not. That really surprised me. This can had been stored in a cool basement storeroom. It was only opened this spring so that we could plant a garden with it. And it had been packaged for 2012. So it's only eight years old and there was no germination at all. I decided I'd go ahead and plant some of those seeds directly into the soil to see if maybe it would be helpful. We did have one of the 10 seeds that I planted 
germinate. And these are ideal conditions in a warm room, under grow lights, in the perfect kind of soil. So again, the lesson that we learn is that in order to get the very best viability from your beans, they have to be rotated. You want to go through those and use them and rotate them so that you have the freshest beans not only to eat, but also for sprouting and planting. And that goes with all your food storage, though, seriously. And I know that I am guilty, but the truth is, if you just learn to use your food storage on a regular basis, it will always be fresh and you will always have a well-stocked pantry. For all the dirty details, check out the Provident Prepper Food Storage Experiment, Will Old Beans Germinate? Also on our YouTube channel, The Dry Bean Myth Debunked. This is our recent video that talked about, will these old beans soften? And we took that challenge and we debunked that myth that they just won't soften. And also another recent video, Extreme Dry Bean Challenge. These were from 1991. And these beans were cooked up and turned into some amazing foods. Take a look and see what you can do with your old beans. The overall rate of germination that we were able to achieve using those two separate methods was actually quite low. However, we have been able to successfully grow some plants to produce the next generation of beans to feed our family. The most important lesson we learned from this is to make sure that we rotate our beans so that we can plant or sprout them if we need to. And now for the question of the day. What experience do you have sprouting really old beans? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.